You know that little SIM card you pop into your phone? Most of us think it's just a tiny piece of plastic that holds our phone number. Kind of boring, right? Well, what if I told you that it's actually a complete independent computer running its own secret operating system, totally hidden from you? And get this, what if a silent, invisible text message could order that hidden computer to track your location or make a phone call, all without you having a clue? This is not a movie plot. It was a very real threat used for surveillance for years. So how did this ghost in the machine actually work? And the big question is, is it still hiding in your phone today? Let's dig in. All right, here's our game plan. First, we're going to tear down what a SIM card really is. Then, we'll look at the hidden commands it uses and how it can be controlled from miles away. After that, we'll dive into the wild story of how this was hacked, check out where we stand with modern SIMs and eSIMs, and I'll wrap it all up with what you can actually do to stay protected. Okay, first things first. To really get this, we have to completely change how we think about the SIM card. It is not just a dumb piece of storage. It's an active, thinking computer. Yeah, the common idea is that it's just a digital ID card for the cell network, but that's not even half the story. The reality is, it's a whole computer system hiding in plain sight, completely separate from your phone's main brain. And I mean, it has all the parts. It's got its own CPU running code, it has its own secure tamper-proof memory, like a tiny digital vault where it stores the really important secrets, like the cryptographic keys that prove you are who you say you are to the network. It's even got a dedicated hardware engine just for doing heavy-duty encryption, and this all runs on its own special operating system, usually something called Java Card. So think of it less like a flash drive and more like the chip on your high-security credit card. So if it's a computer, it has to be able to do stuff, right? Which brings up a really interesting puzzle. How on earth does this tiny, low-power chip tell a super-powerful smartphone what to do? And that really is the million-dollar question. It feels totally backward. The key is a special, privileged communication line that connects the SIM directly to your phone's modem, the baseband processor. It's like a private hotline. The phone's modem and the SIM speak a secret language you never see. It's made up of what are called APDU commands. This isn't an app talking. This is a direct, hardware-level conversation. Your phone's main OS, you know, iOS or Android, is often just passing these messages along without even knowing what's inside. It's a trusted conversation between two parts of the same team. This private hotline is enabled by something called the SIM Application Toolkit, or STK. And this toolkit lets the SIM issue some incredibly powerful commands. For instance, it can ask for your location, not from the GPS, but directly from the modem, using cell tower info. It can tell the phone to send a text message completely silently without you ever seeing it. It can even force your phone to open a web browser or start a call. And here's the kicker. Because this system was designed before modern smartphones, these commands often operate at a level that completely bypasses the usual app permissions you're used to seeing. Okay, so the SIM can control the phone, but how could a hacker on the outside ever get access to the SIM? Well, that brings us to a feature that's both totally necessary and, as it turns out, a huge potential weakness, over-the-air control. Your cell phone provider needs a way to manage millions of SIM cards out in the wild. They do this using over-the-air, or OTA, messages. Now, these are not the texts you get from your friends. They're special binary SMS messages. Your phone's modem is designed to spot these, grab them before they ever hit your messaging app, and hand them directly to the SIM card's operating system. To you, the user, they're completely invisible. They just vanish. Now, this isn't some shady backdoor. It's actually a critical tool. It's how your carrier turns on new features like 5G or updates your roaming settings when you travel or even installs their own little apps on the SIM. It's supposed to be a secure and efficient way to manage things. But what happens when that channel isn't as secure as it's supposed to be? And that's exactly where the whole system fell apart. This is how attackers were able to chain all of these hidden features together and turn a phone into a spy in someone's pocket. Let's walk through the SimJacker attack. First, the attacker sends a carefully crafted malicious OTA message. On older Sims, there was a pre-installed app called the SAT browser. This little applet would receive the message. Now here's the fatal flaw. It had basically zero security. It never checked who sent the instruction, so it would just execute the command, which told the SIM to issue an STK command to the phone, like get location. The phone, getting a valid command from its trusted partner, the SIM, would just obey. It would grab the location data and then follow a second command to text that information back to the attacker, again, silently. All of this and not a single thing would show up on your screen. And SimJacker wasn't the only one. 
A very similar attack, called a Wib attack, went after a different but almost identical applet. You see the pattern here? The problem wasn't a single bug. It was a whole class of vulnerabilities, old, insecure carrier apps that were just left on SIM cards for years, combined with really weak security on that OTA channel. It turned a useful feature into a perfect weapon. So that's the pretty terrifying history. What about the SIM card in your phone right now? Or the eSIM that's built in? Has anything actually changed? Let's talk about where we are today. Let's be really clear about what a modern SIM can and can't do. The SIM's operating system lives in what we call the telecom domain. It can talk to the modem, it can manage network stuff, sure, but it absolutely cannot break out of that box and get into the application domain, which is where your data lives. It can't see your photos, it can't read your signal or WhatsApp messages, it can't turn on your camera. Your phone's main OS is a very strict firewall between those two worlds. Now the fundamental design, a hidden OS on a chip, is still very much there in both physical SIMs and the newer eSIMs. The architecture hasn't really changed. What has changed, thankfully, is that the security built around that architecture is finally catching up. It's a whole lot better. So what's different? Well, for one, those old vulnerable browser apps are gone from modern SIMs. The OTA messages that attackers used now require strong cryptographic signatures, like a digital wax seal, to prove they really came from the carrier. The industry security standards have been seriously beefed up. And with eSIMs, the whole process of loading the SIM profile onto your phone is way more controlled and secure. It's a world away from the old days. All right, so things are way better now. But look, good security is all about layers. So let's talk about a few simple, practical things you can do to shrink your attack surface. First off, if your SIM card is from like five years ago, get a new one. It's probably missing modern security features. Second, if you can, use an eSIM. That whole setup process is just inherently more secure. Third, go into your phone settings and turn off 2G. The encryption on 2G is famously broken, making it way easier for attackers to intercept things. Fourth, use apps like Signal or WhatsApp instead of regular SMS whenever you can. Remember, the entire SimJacker attack relied on the SMS channel. And finally, the boring but crucial one, keep your phone's software updated. Those updates often patch security holes in the very modem that your SIM talks to. So if you take away one thing from all this, let it be this. A SIM is not just a piece of plastic. It's a real secure computer running a hidden operating system, and it is absolutely essential to your phone's connection to the outside world. Which brings us all the way back to our first question. Are you still vulnerable? The answer is, it's complicated. The basic architecture, that hidden OS, is still there. It has to be. But the specific holes that allowed attacks like SimJacker have, for the most part, been patched up. If you have a modern phone with a new SIM or an eSIM, your risk from this specific kind of attack is incredibly low. The ghost in the machine is still there, but by understanding how it works, and with today's safeguards, it looks like it's finally being tamed.